Hello everyone. On this video, I'm going to talk about linear motion and it'll be sort of our first installment. We'll have another video after this, continuing our discussion of linear motion. Okay, so linear motion, as I think I've mentioned in previous lectures, uh, we use synonymously with translation in biomechanics. So both terms mean the same thing. Um, so we're talking about movement in a straight path. So any simultaneous motion of the entire system in the same direction by the same distance along an axis. Um, so as I think I probably discussed in a previous lecture, um, the human body, we don't do any linear motion as the whole body unless we are like in a train or a car or on a moving sidewalk or something like that. So individual parts of the body can translate. Like we can have translation of one vertebra on top of another. So it would just be the movement of the whole vertebra on top of the next vertebra. Or like the scapulas can move in a linear direction. Um, so we can have linear motion of individual segments and individual bones and, and parts of the body, um, but the entire body to move in linear motion where the entire body um, is moving in the same direction by the same distance along an axis, we can only do by having some other thing moving us. Uh, because most of our motion happens because of alternating um, angular motion happening at our joints. Okay, rectilinear translation occurs in a straight line. Um, so we could have movement of the entire system um, by the same distance, that would be linear motion. And if we're going in an exactly straight line, then we would call it rectilinear. Curvilinear would be the path of the object curving. All right, so uh, linear distance traveled. So the measurement of the path traveled by the moving object. So if we look at our picture here, it's the dark blue line with the arrow at the end, that whole line and the dotted line next to it that's showing the distance, that's the linear distance traveled. So it's the actual path and the actual distance that was traveled by whatever it is that's moving. Uh, so it provides a distance but doesn't specify the direction that the travel took place. So like if I walked out my front door and said I went for a three mile walk, I could have gone for three miles in a straight line in one direction and now I'm three miles away from the house. I could have gone three miles on a winding path and landed a mile from the house, or I could have gone in a circular path and ended back at my house. Um, so in any case, that was the linear distance traveled. It's just the amount of distance that I traveled um, regardless of what direction I went or where I ended up. Linear displacement is this green dotted line. Um, so it's a change in position of an object assuming travel in a straight line. Uh, described in terms of linear measurement units, but linear displacement specifies the direction traveled from the first position to the second. So I could walk out my front door and go for a three mile walk and end at a location that is a mile east of my house. Okay, so the three mile walk, that's the linear distance traveled. A mile east of my house, that's the linear displacement. So that's the difference between my starting position and my ending position. So it specifies both the distance between the starting and the ending, but also the direction um, of the difference in my starting and ending position. Okay, so if an object travels in a straight line, so if I go out my front door and walk a mile in a straight line, uh, then the linear distance I traveled that would be a mile, will be exactly the same as the amount of linear displacement. That would also be a mile, but the linear displacement would specify in which direction I went. So maybe I walked a mile east from my house. A mile would be the linear distance traveled, and that would be equal to a mile east, which would be the linear displacement. If the object follows a curved path, then the linear distance traveled will be greater than the linear displacement. So maybe I ended up a mile east of my house, and that would be the linear displacement. 
but maybe I took a three mile long curved path that got me there. Um, so whenever the curved path, whenever the, the path that you take is curved to get to the end position, then the linear distance traveled will always be greater than the linear displacement because the linear displacement is just the, the most direct straightest line between the starting and the ending position. Linear displacement can never be greater than the linear distance traveled. So there's never going to be a, a shorter distance between the starting and the ending position than the straight line that is the linear displacement. So there's no way for linear distance travel to ever be less than that. All right, so rate of motion. Uh, that refers to how fast the object moves from one position to another. So we commonly use speed as our way of measuring rate of motion like we're very familiar with speed like with driving and running and um, so speed is a common measurement of the rate of motion uh, so speed is actually the rate of linear distance traveled um, so if i went out my front door and my linear distance traveled is three miles the speed would be how fast did i travel that those three miles um, so we would take linear distance traveled divided by the time. So regardless of where I landed after my three miles, whether I and went in a straight line and I'm three miles away, or whether I went in a circle and I'm back at my house again, so the linear displacement doesn't matter with speed. Um, it's just a matter of how much time elapsed while I traveled that three miles regardless of where I ended up. So speed is just linear distance traveled divided by the change in time or the amount of time that passed while I was doing the traveling. Velocity is where we do care about the direction. So with velocity, we care about not only um, how much time has passed and what distance was traveled, but we care about um, the position and the direction. So for velocity, linear it's linear displacement divided by time okay so it matters if i went three miles in one direction or if i went three miles in a circle um, because if i went three miles in a circle and landed at the same place then i had no change in position i had no linear displacement and that's different from if i ran three miles from my house to somewhere three miles away then there is a change in position Okay, so velocity is the linear displacement, and we abbreviate that delta P as in change in position. So linear displacement, change in position, divided by the change in time. Um, so whatever time elapsed over that movement. So like in this picture, we could see that a car might be driving 25 um, meters per second in either direction, and that speed is the same, but the velocity is the opposite. Um, in this case, we defined going right as being in the positive direction and going left in the negative direction. Okay, so the rate of travel, you know, the speed remains the same, but the direction changes and that changes the velocity. Okay, so when rate of motion is calculated, the result is actually the average speed or average velocity of the motion. So let's say I go out for a three mile run, and to make things simple, let's say it took 30 minutes to go for this three mile run. So we can average that and say that it was, <laughs> now I'm on the spot, I just totally blanked on what, I, what numbers I just gave you. My three mile run took 30 minutes, so that's 10 minutes per mile. So that would be six miles per hour, okay? So that would be the speed is six miles per hour if I ran three miles in 30 minutes. Um, so that doesn't mean that I was running six miles per hour every minute of that whole run. Um, as any of you know, like you might've fluctuated, maybe you've been walked for a couple minutes. Okay, so your speed is, might fluctuate as you're traveling. And so what you're ultimately calculating was the average speed during the run, not your actual speed at any given moment. So at any given moment, we could take a snapshot in time and calculate that speed. Okay, so the peak rate of motion would be the maximum uh, speed or velocity that was achieved during 
a given movement. So like during that 30 minute run, what was my maximum speed that I achieved? That would be the peak rate of motion. And an instantaneous speed or instantaneous velocity would be what the speed or velocity velocity is at any specific moment in time during that movement. So in my 30 minute run, I could have, I could measure my instantaneous speed or velocity at any given moment during that entire run. Okay, so for the most part, we're calculating rate of motion as the average over the whole motion. But depending on how detailed we want to be, we might want to go instant by instant or look at the peak or the minimum, you know, the lowest um, rate of motion. Um, but for the most part, we're looking at the average. Okay, so acceleration is a change in velocity. So that could be a change in the amount of travel, like the speed of the travel, or the direction, or both. So if we have a change in speed, direction, or both, then acceleration is occurring. Okay, so that's with respect to time. So a change in velocity divided by a change in time. So how much is velocity changing over the time that's elapsing? So if acceleration is zero, that means that you know we're analyzing a motion, the thing is still in motion, um, so the thing is still traveling, but the velocity hasn't changed if the acceleration is zero. It doesn't mean there's no motion, because there's still velocity, um, but it means the velocity isn't changing. If acceleration is positive, it means that the object is increasing in speed. Okay, so positive acceleration, we're increasing in speed. If acceleration is negative, it's decreasing in speed. Um, and you all probably heard the term decelerate or deceleration. That's another word for negative acceleration, it means the same thing. Um, in biomechanics, I think you hear uh, negative acceleration more often than deceleration, uh, but really we're talking about the exact same thing, it's just less. Um, less speed. So velocity is changing in the negative direction. Uh, acceleration is also usually calculated as an average rate of change in velocity or average acceleration, just like we have average speed and average velocity. Uh, but we also, just like with speed and velocity, could observe a, the acceleration at a specific instant in time, and that would be the instantaneous acceleration. Okay, that is all I have for you in this lecture. I'm gonna end here. I'll see you for the next one.